I suspect the late actor Bruno Gerussi would love to be here with us today to talk about CBC and his passions for food, wine, politics, and acting. Unfortunately, Bruno left us too soon, so Jackson Davies is left to reflect on Bruno's beachcomber life and the crazy cast that made that show CBC's longest-running comedy drama. Yeah. What nerve did it hit? Why? Because it was international. Yeah, we sold 50, 60 different countries around the world, and not just a couple of episodes or for a year or two. I mean, in uh, Australia and Germany and, and, and all, you know, all over the world, we sold years and years to show. Mm -hmm. I, get, I get emails from all over the world every week that kids watched it while they were growing up. I, I, I think it was a family thing. The nerve it hit, I think, in Canada was it was at the right time. You know, the early 70s, uh, tele television was coming. So family television was there. We followed Disney. And we had huge numbers, you know, three, four million people. The family would get together, probably only one television then. So it was right. maybe one of the shows sure. that they could agree Appointment on. Appointment television. Appointment television. Mm -hmm. uh, I think someone said the three Bs. It was beachcomber. No, it was, it was bath, uh, uh, bath, bed. No, bath, beachcombers, and bed. What so, about beer? And beer, well, that's, that's a beer parents. Beer for dad. That's, yeah, that was a parents thing. So it was that sense of family that they would sit around and watch the show. And, mm -hmm. uh, and when I run into people on the street now that, that have seen it, they, they, the, the frustration is they want to show, now they're growing up with their own kids and they can't really get a chance to, 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 for them to, you know, to share it with their kids. Well, if you uh, saunter across to Gibson's, mm -hmm. you'll see the Persephone, the tugboat, yes. still there. Yeah, still there. We actually, they put it right beside the Molly's Reach, which is still a functioning restaurant. And, uh, uh, you know, you, if there's tourists there every day, every day. In the summer, it's, it's backed up to get in. So it's, uh, mm. it's neat. The people, they, they, they put it on their bucket list. They want to go and see where they film the beachcombers and, you know, Gibson's and Monty's Reach. And if you are in the heaven, a few of yeah. the beachcombers, uh, Relic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rob, Robert Clothier and What Ray. was his real name? Robert Clothier. No, didn't oh, he have Stanford, another name? Oh, in the show, Stanford T. Phillips, I think. Stanford T. Phillips, Phillips yeah, yes. Which I Relic. think was a, a, tri a trivia question mm -hmm. answer, yeah. Clothier, great yeah. actor. Great actor. Funny great, man. Funny man, classic, again, classically trained. A sculptor, uh, uh, you know, an artist and just and a, a decorated uh, pilot in the war. Yeah. Right, yeah. and Molly, she's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, mm -hmm. there's... Uh, there's, I guess, me, and, the, and of course the younger, uh, uh, Pat John, who played Jesse, uh, I chatted to him a little while, he, he lives up, up the coast, and, and uh, Charlene Alec, who played Sarah, and uh, Corey Douglas, and uh, uh, Cameron right. Bancroft, and the rest of the, of the kids are, are still here, and exactly. I see them once Exactly, this a while. is yeah. good. Well, yeah. you know, the CBC tried to kill that show many times, as you know. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, you know, it's uh, uh, it's interesting. We were this kind of quirky show, this Canadiana kind of, I, I don't know, we certainly weren't uh, a, a classic show. We, you know, we weren't a highbrow show. We were just a show that people wanted to watch and had it had just, you know, interesting characters you wanted sure. to spend a half hour with. Someone said, it, we're too big to fail. Yeah, that's Before the, someone else said that. Yeah, and I think also mm -hmm. when, at once they, uh, I, I did hear after the book was written, I, I heard someone told me at, uh, higher up that said, I think in the third year they were thinking of moving uh, the Beachcomber show to Lake Ontario. <laughs> so, really? you know, so closer Why to not? Toronto. Closer mm, to Toronto. Closer to Toronto yeah, because, as yeah. you know, at the Corp, the yeah. Mother Corp, where yeah. we both worked, yeah. Toronto comes to the West and changes things up occasionally, yeah. Yeah. much yeah. to our dismay. Yeah, and it's interesting that a lot of the more popular shows in Canada have been from the regions, whether they're the Corner mm. Gas or, you know, uh, Republic of Doyle or, or whatever, they're from the regions. And, uh, and the strength in Canada, I you know, always feel, are, are from the regions. Uh, one of our talented guys, Mike Keeping, who directs yeah. this show, he was the assistant editor on Beachcombers, and yes. he brought me outtakes, yeah. which means yeah, well, it means things it, we it, never yeah, see. Things, maybe mistakes or things, goofy things you do. We used to have this party, you know, called the uh, the pig party at the end of the year. They'd roast a pig, and we'd show the big boys. I don't know how it got that term, but they were basically outtakes. They'd assemble them, and Mike would assemble them and put some music behind them. And uh, it was the highlight of, of, of our year when we go and, and watch these things. I'm sure, yeah. the bloopers. The bloopers, yeah. Pretty much. Well, of course, we... I never made a mistake. In, no, in that of course 16 not. years, I never made one mistake that whole no, time. No, you didn't. No. I once won the uh, Slippery Lips Award on radio. I won't tell you why. <laughs> Slippery lips. But I won it yeah, big time at the I, Christmas party. I don't know whether I'd want that trophy on my mantle. No, you don't, want, <laughs> you don't want the Slippery Lips Award. No, 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 no. But let's take a look at you trying to do it perfectly. Yeah. Constable, constable. Did you get anything? I had the money from the till under my pillow. Good thinking. Shit. 
Good shit, eh? Four echo, four echo, take two. Wait a minute. <laughs> Molly, just take it easy. It's a new program. He said it can't miss. It's called Community Prime. What was it called again? Community Prime. It's a lot like Community Crime. <clears throat> Molly, just relax. It's a new program. He said it can't miss. It's called Community Prime. <laughs> Come on, Jack. Keep trying, Jack. You can get it. You can get it, Molly, Molly, just relax. Take it easy. Molly, relax. Take it easy. <laughs> they must have found the only two times in my whole career. Of course. I, I made a mistake. Of course. Can you say it today? Community. No, I can't. I couldn't say it then. <laughs> Community prime, crime, See, lime. You, yeah. I usually would try to re rewrite those. Mm -hmm. Actually, for the longest time, I couldn't pronounce the actual kids' names were Carmody, and I could never say that, so I'd just say the kids. The kids, the Carmody <laughs> the kids. kids yeah. Carmody but kids. You, as you know so well, when you work on a series, there are some who always get their lines, like, right off the top, and there are others not so good. Well, Bruno, you know, Bruno could take a script, and he'd, go, mm -hmm, mumble, and he'd have it, like, in three seconds. Mm. I'd hate him. He'd just, you know, he'd just, had no problem whatsoever. I know. That's good I know, to know. You know it, yeah, it is. It's a, yeah, it is. It, it's a lot to do with the writing, too. Uh, it's, mm. uh, well, he fought, as I recall. Yeah. You write about it in here. Mm. There's a few things uh, you reveal that the public doesn't know <laughs> about Bruno having a, a, a few issues with uh, the uh, script writers. And what yeah. was her name? Oh, Suzanne Finley. Yeah, yeah. She was. Uh, uh, it was from uh, Toronto. It, from Toronto. Yeah, and it was uh, obviously you go. It's a. Uh, it's a new series. It's. Uh, and yeah, I, and I think what happened is that they went in a different direction when Bruno thought he would be, the, you know, the the main uh, the main star and whatever. But like I said, it's, it's very difficult to be the lead in these series because you've got to drive yeah. the plot, and you don't. Yeah. You know, you don't get all the fun stuff. I mean, you know, I got to come in and be goofy or whatever. Robert got to be the bad guy that everybody loved as Relic. So it, it was tough, but Bruno fought only because you know for the show. He really did. He you know it was important to him, and uh, and you know I guess it, it worked because it went nice. Sure, years. someone has yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, and he directed some shows. Absolutely. He did was, you get to direct ever? Yeah, I, I directed a couple episodes. It was it was great. It was uh, uh, everyone would kind of. Uh, you know, help help you out on that. Bruno was it was fun when he was directing the show because he he would it looked like he was a kid again because he really enjoyed it. He really mm. enjoyed that that part of it. I remember he always used to clap his hands out, come on, let's go, and, and be really spunky, and that was that was fun. So you stage your screen, uh, given the choice. You've done I don't know how many stage shows, yeah. uh, everything from Mice and Men to uh, the Wild Guys. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's you know I think it depends on the material. I, all actors love the theater because the response is immediate. Yeah. Uh, it's there's some, something magical about being in a, in, in a theater doing a show, and whether it's something serious or or it's a comedy, there's it's just uh, it's immediate and it, and it's wonderful. And and in my particular case, I probably get a chance to do better quality work on the stage. You know, I'm not going to be able to do the movie of uh, of, of Mice and Men. So, uh, but film, I, I I love it too. If I if I have a, a, a if I have a, a piece of the creative part of it, I really enjoy that mm -hmm. part about it as well. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, if you're doing the, nothing wrong with doing the American series or things like that, but you're basically put up there to move the plot along and, uh, you know, and, and the guy with the great hair and the good look solves the crimes. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Uh, and the commercials you wrote, yeah. or you still write, yeah. Yeah, and I, act in, well, didn't you do Brown Brothers? No, Was no, actually, you? Carter, Carter, Carter. Carter. Yeah. Oh. Well, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's oh, fine. Oh, a gaff. Uh, yeah, but that's. I guess they weren't all that good. For, no, I. I <laughs> no, they were because you I, kept hitting the wall in the car. Yeah, that's right. I, you know, I always tried to bring a certain amount of dignity to my work on commercials, but of I actually I, I carried over that that bumbling role. Of and course. I actually, I started doing commercials when I was in my early twenties. Uh, I had a girlfriend uh, whose brother owned a carpet company, so I did some <laughs> really bad commercials <laughs> in, uh, in 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 Edmonton for Carpet mm -hmm. World. I think the name was. Mm -hmm. But I enjoyed doing commercials as well because I, again I had a lot of the creative input and to me they were just a you know a 30 second short film that uh, that had a had a funny ending uh and you enjoyed working on Beachcombers with Mark Strange I know that Renaissance man you say the only two Renaissance men you ever yeah knew. I you know and I you know again like I said I, I grew up in Wetaskiwin and a Renaissance man in, in Wetaskiwin was someone who played senior hockey and sold cars uh but my when I first met this guy, I mean, here's a guy that was a fabulous a singer, 
uh, an actor, uh, uh, and 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 a great writer, and, and a painter. I mean, all and I'm thinking, yeah. God, this guy could do it all, and, and he could. And it was uh, mm -hmm. it was it was a treat to be able to to say his lines, and and he later went on to uh, to, to write a lot of fiction books and uh, be very popular. And then he was struggling with, uh, with with cancer as we were finishing the book, and he he uh, we just finished it, and he passed away just shortly after that. So. Uh, uh, that was bittersweet. Of that, you know, first of all, it was great that we were able to finish it. Uh, but uh, but again, a great part. book, The yeah. Beachcombers at forty. At forty. At forty. You're forty-one now. Yeah, I ju yeah, that's right. I'd be forty-two next month. Was your gun real? <laughs> no, no, of course. Well, actually, I had a gun for the first. I think I pulled the, out the gun once. Never fired it. And then, actually, near the end, I just took a had a little wooden handle that I put in the in the holster. I see. Because they're heavy. The guns were heavy. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. And now they have like Glocks or something. Oh, yeah. They're made no, out of plastic. Right. But in those days, yeah. a real pistol. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't have a real gun constable constable. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. The truth be told. Yes, it is now. It's oh, nice to see you, my friend. It's a pleasure. Cheers. Cheers. And remember, you can catch our conversations on YouTube or follow me on Twitter at Fanny Kiefer. There will be many more talented, insightful, quirky guests to come. Thanks for watching Shaw TV and being with me today.